you were left to yourself, unengaged for a while, chances are you'd catch yourself fidgeting, reaching out for your smartphone, looking for something to do or someone to talk to. I think we can all agree that there's a level of difficulty in being still. But what would happen if we decided to spend some time every day in stillness? I asked myself a similar question one December two years ago. In it, I'd heard a message, and in it, my pastor had shared several things he recommended keeping as a practice. I was touched, and what stood out to me the most in all that he had said was spending time to reflect, because I didn't understand it, yet it sounded simple and meaningful. So, as one of my New Year resolutions, I decided that I'd spend my car rides to and from school in patient reflection. On my first day of the challenge. On Monday, I got into our car, turned off my cell phone, and just stared out the window. It was winter in Russia, where I live, and it was all windy and cloudy. I still remember all the traffic lights we stopped by that day. They were eight. They were、uh, red for small but varying amounts of time: thirty, twenty-five, forty-five, forty-nine, twenty-one seconds. Except for one particularly tricky intersection, where we waited almost two minutes, watching the lights change three times. All things considered, it was not the best of first-time experiences. But the next day came, and somehow I went through with it. Wednesday too, then Thursday, and pretty soon I'd completed my first week of patient readjustment. After that first milestone, things started getting a whole lot more interesting. I began noticing things I would have missed if I was on my phone. Or otherwise occupied, trivial things at first, but as time went on, I started noticing things, patterns that greatly differed from what I was used to back home in my country, Uganda. Things like, I never noticed there was triangles on every car, which indicated that those cars had winter tires on them. I realized that I never saw any children seated in the co-driver's seat of any car. And that whenever there was an accident, no matter how small, the cars involved always stopped and waited for the police to get to them. The first weeks of the challenge were weeks of patient observation, but as time went on, I realized I was not just looking out my window, but beyond it, into the affairs that had made my day. An up day, when major positive things had happened. A down day, when the opposite was true. Unknown days, which were uneventful and could not be graded. I'd start by thinking of how my day had gone, and in the process, I'd remember a not so bright moment of my day, like an instance where someone, my brother, had been misunderstood, and I had responded to what he said sharply as we left the house. Maybe I'd played it down in the heat of the moment, thinking that he was wrong, but during that 30-minute ride. I would see where I too had caused a problem, and this is great, except it wasn't always the case. I'd continue and think of, think of things I'd said, the people I'd said them to, how I could have said them better, and often in going back, I'd realize some even bigger mistakes. And for a while, when I'd get to those parts of my day, I'd dwell on them, correcting conversations and offering explanations mentally, without realizing how much this was causing negativity and blame to me. Once in the middle of my mental rumbling, I stopped and asked myself what I was doing. The purpose of the silence I'd heard was to get to know my own heart, and as far as I could tell, I wasn't listening. I knew I expressed myself best in writing, but I hadn't written anything about my observations, and definitely not my thoughts. So when I got home that day, I decided I'd do it a little different. I decided I'd write it down. I'd go back and indeed review my day. But when I'd get to the part of the day when the urge to stay and wallow in my mix-up was strong, I'd go on writing because the day had gone on. And as I wrote, I realized that the days I thought were bad were not so bad after all. When I had finished reviewing everything that had happened in it, and these weren't always the big things, even the little things like acknowledging that yes, I may have been blasted in the face at PE, but the girls won that soccer game, or that. We may have had a very tiresome lesson that day, but we got a free lesson for all our hard work. These things taught me to be grateful, 
and by recording my thoughts and understanding my emotions, I was able to self-reflect. Reflection is giving your brain an opportunity to pause from the chaos, sort through what you see, create meaning, and learn from it. It is thinking back, reviewing the day's events, but also thinking inward, because when you write, especially something as personal as a journal, you tend to add your own point of view, how you felt, things you may have wanted to say but didn't get a chance to, and that in turn leads you to think outward. Because when you've analyzed your own emotion, you tend to wonder, how did the other person feel? What prompted them to react this way? And ultimately, like I did in my case, that makes you plan to do better, become more creative with your options, more sensitive to those around you. And when you realize that life is so much bigger than your problems, and when you choose to move on from the negatives to the positives, you choose to move forward. And that's what reflection is all about. Thank you.